Well, hello, you guys. I am Dr. Adam Nally. I am a board-certified family physician and obesity medicine specialist coming to you live from um, Waddell, Arizona, actually. Uh, it's a Monday afternoon, and I thought I would talk to you about part number five uh, of the uh, uh, 25 reasons that, uh, or the 25 benefits that ketosis brings to you. I figure I would talk about the yin and yang of glucose. Uh, real simply, in about four to five minutes, I wanted to tell you about two hormones that either mirror or uh, work inversely in relationship to glucose itself. Now, when insulin is released, your body also releases a hormone called amylin, and you probably never heard about amylin before, but amylin is actually uh, follows the exact pattern that insulin follows. So as the beta cell produces insulin, it also produces amylin, and it actually tracks in, in an identical pattern. Uh, amylin actually has an inhibitory effect on glucon, glucagon. Now, glucagon is the opposite of what insulin does. Glucagon actually turns on the production of insulin I'm sorry, glucose of glucose at the liver. So glucagon, as it goes up, it actually stimulates the liver to produce more glucose or gluconeogenesis, the creation of sugar in the system. And as glucagon goes down and insulin goes up, you'll actually see the opposite occur and the, the glucose will decrease in the bloodstream and you'll see a, uh, a pulling of the glucose out of the bloodstream by the insulin. Amylin is kind of the signaling mechanism that tells glucagon whether to go up or to go down. And uh, so I'm going to show you a graph here and let me switch over to this uh, sh sheet here. And you can see that when, um, right here, if you can see my mouse working on this screen right here. So as uh, insulin goes up, uh, which is the uh, blue, uh, you see amylin goes up, which is the red. And just the insulin goes down, amylin follows it. So there's this tracking period. So over those three meals this person theoretically would have had on this upper graph, you can see that amylin tracks it directly. Now, the important thing to understand is that these are in healthy subjects. The graph below at the bottom here, you actually see that in healthy subjects, as after a single meal, as, um, as the amylin... Uh, goes up following insulin in a healthy subject. In the blue subjects here, these are patients with type 2 diabetes. Amylin doesn't really rise much, and in type 1 diabetics, they don't produce hardly any, any amylin at all. So that's the challenge, is that that amylin actually mimics what's happening. And if you, uh, the, worth, the further you get down the insulin resistance road, the more and more uh, suppressed amylin response you have, and the worse control of glucose you get. So glucagon's always on, and that glucagon pushes that blood sugar up and up and up and up. And so that's the big challenge that you see. So um, what I wanted you to realize is that a ketogenic diet doesn't require the use of insulin and allows for that insulin and that beta cell to heal and we see some improvement in the overall amylin improvement uh, and amylin release as well. So uh, one of the great benefits, benefit number five of a ketogenic diet is it, it decreases the need for insulin, decreases the need for amylin, and you actually see a more stable blood sugar in most cases. Now in those of you that have an amylin deficiency, uh, then we have some medications that work to help that too. <clears throat> I won't go into that, but that's, the, that's uh, number five of 25. Uh, so keep your fat high, keep your carbs low, uh, and enjoy your uh, ketonian week and have a great time. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.